probably be about 85 when we started to sort of go out a bit more to, you know, to gigs at, you know, the, the Queen's Hall as was, and and we discovered the plough as well. Yeah. The one, one gig we do remember was that folk band. The Battlefield Band. Yeah, they did a couple of... They I think they played there times. twice. Twice that I can remember. Yeah. Anyway. And the thing that got me was the enthusiasm of the audience. And and that even today I'd say that. Because we're out on a limb, you don't get many people come down here mm. of any fame uh, to speak of. And so when somebody does come in, everyone's yeah. Up yeah, for everyone's it. really it's almost like not that they're grateful, but I think that they appreciate the the effort of coming down here more. I think when in London, it was almost like the audience would sit back and go, yeah, okay, entertain, entertain me. Yeah. Whereas I think seeing bands down here, back then anyway, um, yeah, I think people were much more ready to be entertained and, and would respond more. Um, because I remember it as that it didn't have fixed seats. They, they were the, the sort of seats that, that were laid out in rows. Um, and therefore they were moved easily. So if you did want to get up and dance, you, you would just sort of stand up and your seat would, would just move. Yeah, it was much more lively when, you know, when you could at least stand up and there was a bit of leg room to, yeah. between one row and the next, enough for you to move around a bit. Yeah. Know? And as I say, the enthusiasm and, and like the, the, the Battlefield Band had sing-along choruses to their stuff and everybody was joining in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We saw Witchbone Ash just because, because they were there weren't many bands coming down that we did like. Wishbone Ash, we thought, yeah, twin guitars, we can deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> and they were they put on a good show. Yeah. And, and again, the the audience reaction was very positive. You know, there were real real fans there. But I just remember it being like a big barn of a place. Um, it was, it was just square and basic, and when the lights were on, it was like really very slightly tatty round the edges. Um, yeah, but you could say that about the Lyceum in London. True. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that was that looks really good on the telly, but it's not. And there's chewing gum <laughs> on the floor. And, oh. <laughs> yeah, but no, I, I remember the Queen's Hall as as being, yeah, like <clears throat> like um just very utilitarian I think and quite it was very provincial wasn't it what you'd expect as a provincial theatre yeah and one that was struggling for funding but it it, it, it didn't it had a down home you know you could relax in it because it had that it wasn't posh posh was it no a different one was uh, I I can remember the Chinese magic acrobats coming. oh yes and that did have families going along to it and uh, we'd heard good reports of it and so I can't remember it was a special occasion. I think not. it was for your dad's birthday. And my dad's birthday, right. So we got my mum and dad who rarely went anywhere and your mum and my dad. My mum and dad and the two children. And the two children and we booked front row seats. We got the front, you know, a bunch of us on the front two rows and that was one of the highlights of my life actually. It was. Um, they were piling, you know, like 20 chairs on top and climbing up and things like that. And then there was, <coughs> you know, the act where they get someone laid out and then they gradually move everything away. And we were on the front row and couldn't see how it was done. And I, I, a couple of weeks later at work, I mentioned it to someone and he said, oh, oh, I'll tell you how they do that. I said, no, no, I want the magic, I want the magic. And, uh, and so I... He wouldn't tell me, I wouldn't let him tell me. But um, there was things like, because we were on the front row and they were doing illusions, they they got us to check things out. Like uh, there's something I had to throw things up and this woman was balancing and So oh, it was the spinning plates, you had to throw the, the plate up and she caught it and, and yeah. got it spinning. And then the sword swallower um, got me dad, you know, his ex-regimental chap, you know, he, he knew all about these things so got him up to test the sword and he was there, oh yeah, yeah, genuine article, yes, bang, bang on his knee, yeah, 
Uh, and the, the other highlight with the sword swallowing, wasn't it? Mm. Um, do you remember the um, Star Wars laser? The, 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 the lightsaber Lightsabers. She, <coughs> she swallowed one of them and then dimmed the lights. So you could see the glow of it through her throat here. And that was like, oh. That, yeah, <laughs> the, the children, because I think Gunga was about three or four. And so Rama would have been about ten. And they were both absolutely transfixed. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd forgotten about that. That, that, was a, uh, that was a really, really good night. Um, and, and, and then the, the fact that it was all tatty really didn't matter because you were just completely en engrossed oh, in. It could have been, been anywhere. But yeah, I'd forgotten about that. Well remembered. Yeah. Earlier, the, they used to have the, the antiques market there on Friday. So there'd always be flyers, you know, outside. Um, but I used to enjoy going to that. I, I, I'm not an antiques collector, but I just used to like rummaging around and, and seeing if I could find something quite wonderful, really, really cheap. And I think they used to have, I think so, um, uh, like a records fair, um, it was before CDs obviously, um, but there, there used to be a stall there that sold um, cassettes of, I don't know whether people had recorded things off of the radio and, and put them onto cassette, but they were, they were sort of like live concerts and I can remember buying a live Michael Jackson concert for our daughter.